Okay, so I'm doing a series of little videos on the regulations BS 7671 and this time we're going to have a look at the adiabatic equation. I've also got a short version of this as well, the idea being that you pause and watch it. It's all condensed into a minute. So what is the adiabatic equation? It's a formula to make sure that the cross-sectional area of the conductor is sufficient to allow it to withstand the energy let through of a protected device before that device operates under fault conditions. Basically we want the cable to be big enough so it can handle fault currents. During a fault you can get hundreds or thousands of amps flowing and that can affect the cable, it can heat it up. If it heats it up too much, that cable can snap, just like the fuse wire and a rewirable fuse. Also your conductors for the insulation can heat up and break as well if they're incorrectly sized for any fault currents that may flow. So it's an important calculation. The adiabatic equation is for your protective conductors and it's generally for faults under 5 seconds. The adiabatic equation is mentioned in part 5 of BS 7671, Selection and Erection of Equipment. It's in chapter 54, Earthing Arrangements and Protective Conductors and the reg number is 543.1.1. The cross-sectional area of every protective conductor other than a protective bonding conductor shall be calculated or it shall be selected. The adiabatic equation is the calculated method, or there's also a table that we can look at, which I mentioned further on in the video. The regs then go on to tell us when calculation is necessary, and it gives examples if the protective conduct is not an integral part of a cable, it's not formed by conduit, ducting or trunking, and it's not contained in an enclosure formed by a wiring system. It tells us then the minimum cross-sectional area in those circumstances, and then what to do when a protective conductor is common to two or more circuits. So here's an example. What is the minimum cross-sectional area for a protective conductor with this set of values? It's at 230 volts. The cable is 70 degrees C PVC cable. The protective device is a 63 amp BS883 C and we require a disconnection time of 0.4 seconds. So this is the actual equation. S equals the square root of I squared times T divided by K where S is the nominal cross-sectional area of the conductor in millimetres squared. I2 is the value in amps for the fault current. T is the operating time of the protective device. And K is a factor that we find in the table in BS7671. So step one is to calculate the fault current. It's just a little bit of Ohm's law. Voltage divided by resistance will give you current. So the voltage is the nominal voltage to earth, in this case 230 volts. We have a correction factor known as C min which is to take into account voltage fluctuations. We times the voltage by C min, 0.95, and we divide that by the ZS, 230 times 0.95 divided by 0.35, it'll give us a fault current of 624 amps. Then step two will be to determine the type and size of the protective device. In our scenario, we're using the BS883, but you've got your BS60898, your typical MCB, or your RCBO, your 61009, and various different types, B, C, and D. BS3036 is still recognised in the book. BS1361s, they've been replaced with the BS88s. So we've got a BS88 Type 3, haven't we? So we now can look up the disconnection times for this type of device. So step three. The time for the overcurrent protected device to operate. We'll find this in Appendix 3. The time current characteristics for overcurrent protected devices. And we want figure 3A1, which is fuses to BS88-3. And if you follow along the bottom line, the perspective current in amps, we're looking for 624. And then we go up, so we come to that line, the diagonal line and take that across and then we can see that a fault current of 624 amps will operate the device in 0.3 seconds. There's a table at the top there tell you that for 0.4 seconds it will be 600 amps. We've got a little bit more. If you've got an actual measured fault current, always use that. 624 amps will trip this BS88 fuse in 0.3 seconds. Now we have to look up our value for K and this is table 43.1 in 7671. And we've got a thermoplastic cable. It's a copper conductor. It's 70 degrees C. And it's also less than 300 millimetres squared. There's the column we want. And the factor for K is 115. So K is 115. Right, we've got all the numbers we need. Fulcrum, we've got our time. And we've got our K value. 
So the sum is the square root of 624 squared times 0 0.3 and then we divide that total by 115, 115. We don't square root the whole sum, we just square root the top line and then divide by 115. And that gives us our minimum cable size of 2.97. So the minimum size of our protective conductor is 2.97 millimetres. So the nearest available larger conductor size would be four millimeters squared. You have to go larger. 2.97 is the absolute minimum. So you go the next size up. But there are other factors involved in cable selection. You've got your thermal withstand, all your installation methods, your temperature of insulation and such, length of run. The adiabatic equation can give you quite surprisingly small sizes of protective conductor. So you use your engineering judgment to see if the suggested size is suitable. Or the other method, of selecting a protective conductor is with selection using table 54.7. The reg is 543.1.4 and this will give you the minimum cross-sectional area of protective conductor in relation to the cross-sectional area of the line conductor. So in the first two columns you've got the cross-sectional area of the line conductor. The second column gives you the protective conductor size as long as it is the same material as the line conductor. The third column is a formula to use if you're using different metals. So if the line conductor is less than or equal to 16 millimeters then the protective conductor is the same size as your line conductor. Or if the line conductor is greater than 16 millimeters but less than or equal to 35, then you would use a 16 millimeter squared protective conductor. And if the line conductor is greater than 35 millimeters, then the protective conductor is half of the line conductor. And as you can see, this method will generally give you a larger cross-sectional area than calculation. And it airs on the side of caution. So the adiabatic equation gives us the size of the protective conductor that we need. There's also another calculation that we also need to do. We need to know that the fault should be interrupted within such a time that the fault current does not cause the permitted limiting temperature of any conductor or cable to be exceeded. We need to know how quickly that cable will get to a limiting temperature. We'll do that equation in another video. Well, I hope that was of some use to you. And thanks very much for watching.